Welcome back everyone. My today's lesson is about mastodites. A poorest definition of mastodites is all inflammatory process of the mastoid air cells of the temporal bone. As the mastoid is a contagious to and an extension of the middle ear cleft, virtually every child with acute otitis media or chronic middle ear inflammatory disease has mastodites. In most cases, the symptomatology of the middle ear predominates and the disease within the mastoid is not considered a separate entity. When we see the etiology, always we should have to consider host and the microbial risk factors when evaluating a surgical mastodite. Host factors for having mastodites include abnormality or impaired mucosal immunity, temporal bone anatomical problems, and the systemic immunity. Microbial factors include protective coating, antimicrobial resistance, and also ability to penetrate local tissue or vessels. As the clearance of the mastoid is dependent upon a patent antrum, a resolution is unlikely unless this anatomical stem opens by control of mucosal swelling, which otherwise creates a reservoir for infection. Because acute otitis media is the antecedent disease, the most common etiology causing acute mastoiditis include Streptin pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, and Moraxera cataralis. Each of these bacteria has invasive forms and is recovered most often from children presenting with acute suppurative mastoiditis. Others include Staphylococcus, Group A Streptococcus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Mycobacterium species. Acute mastoiditis is always associated with acute otitis media. In some patients, the infection spreads beyond the mucosa of the middle ear cleft and they develop ostites within the mastoid air cells or peristites of mastoid process, either directly by bone erosion through the cortex or indirectly via the initial vein of the mastoid. Whereas, chronic mastoiditis is most commonly associated with chronic suppurative otitis media, particularly with cholestatoma formation. As you know, cholestatomas are benign aggregates of squamous epithelium that can grow and alter normal structure and the function of surrounding soft tissue on the bone. This destructive process is accelerated in the presence of active infection by secretion of osteolytic enzymes by the epithelial tissue. Mastodites progresses in the following three stages and may be arrested at any point by treatment. The first stage is hyperimia of the mucosal lining of the mastoid air cells, then transudation and exudation of fluid and or pass within the cells, and the necrosis of bone by loose of vascularity of the septa. This is followed by cell wall loose with quiescence into abscess cavities. Then as the extension of the inflammatory process to contagious area occur. Signs and the symptoms of mastoiditis include, uh, most of the time symptoms begin days to weeks after onset of acute otitis media and include fever and a severe otalgia. Nearly all patients have signs of otitis media and the purulent otoria. Redness, swelling, tenderness, and the fluctuation may develop over the mastoid process, and the pinna is typically displaced laterally and inferiorly. Tenderness and inflammation over the mastoid process are the most consistent signs of acute mastoiditis. Diagnosis of mastoiditis is mainly clinical. CT is usually done, especially if an intratemporal or intracranial complication is suspected and if you also we want to know the extent of the infection. Any middle ear range is sent for culture and sensitivity, and other investigations like CBC and ASR are abnormal, but they are neither sensitive nor specific and are little to the diagnosis. There are two types of treatment for mastoiditis. This include medical and surgical treatment. The medical management include antibiotic for infection and the anti-inflammatory medications such as corticosteroids, analgesics, systemic decongestants, and also uh, irrigation for removing purulent discharges. And also the patient needs antipyretics because it is associated with significant increment in body temperature. Surgical management or surgical removal of the infected tissue is necessary if the client does not respond to antibiotic administration within a few days. A simple or modified radical mastoidectomy with Tympanoplasty is the most common treatment. All infected tissue must be removed so that the infection does not spread to the other structures. So this is all about mastoidias 
Thank you for watching.